So now we'll start looking at this thing known as stoichiometry. So what I recommend you do in your textbook, it's chapter 9, and understanding chemistry, and your notes. I can't remember if I handed these out to you or I'll send them on to you. Page 173. Now if I send them on to you, it'll be page 1. Say so now we'll start the stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry is this branch of chemistry that enables us to work out the amounts of reactants and products in a reaction. Now it's very mathsy. I'll go through each of the kind of the type of calculations in it. Should be no bother to you. Um, and we'll just tip away through them. And come the live class then that we have scheduled or whatever. Or even any time you can ask me. I can't understand this but or I can't understand this but here. But we'll work through examples. We'll get used questions to try. And then use go tipping away through the book as well. When I say pause video, use battery on there and try different things yourselves. So the first type here is to work out the percentage of each element in the compound. So you want to see what percentage of a compound is made up of a certain element. So this first type, calculate the percentage of each element in CaO, calcium oxide. So they want you to work out the percentage of calcium and the percentage of oxygen. So the first thing you got to do there is work out the total mass, so the relative molecular mass of CaO. So if you take out your periodic table, you see the mass number of calcium is 40. So 1 by 40 is 40. And oxygen there is 16. 1 by 16 16. So your relative molecular mass is 56. So the percentage of calcium in it is 40, the mass of calcium, over 56. And to make anything a percent, times it by 100. So if we throw that in our calculator, 40 divided by 56, multiply it by 100, we get 71 point, say two decimal places, 71.43%. Now automatically to work out the oxygen, you just take that away from um, 100 and you get 28.57. If we work out the percentage of oxygen, the mass of oxygen over the total mass, or the relative molecular mass, and times it by 100. 16 divided by 56. Times that by 100, 28.57, exactly as we said. Easies. Now, next one. Find the percentage of iron and iron to oxide. So these should just follow along your notes. So firstly, get the total relative molecular mass or the relative molecular mass of this compound. There's two irons, so 2 by 56, 112. 3 oxygens, 3 by 16 is 48, so the relative molecular mass is 160. Here it says the mass of iron in it, so it's 2 by 56 is 112. You put in both of the irons over 160 and times that by 100. 112 out of 160 times that by 100, and you get 70%. So what you're doing is the mass of whatever element over the total mass and then times in that by 100 to make it a percent. Next one, find the mass of nitrogen in ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate, remember nitrate, NO3 minus, your brown ring test for nitrates, that was your positive radical there, NH4 plus. Anyway, work out the total relative molecular mass, so there we can see two nitrogens, so 2 by 14 is 28, 4 hydrogens and 3 oxygens. Tally that all up, 32, 70, 80, is it? 28 plus 4 plus 48, that's 80. And then the mass of nitrogen in it, so it's 28 over 80, and then times that by 100 to make it a percent. Maybe 35%. So you often see that in like fertilizers. Now, get a wee bit more difficult here. Percentage water of crystallization. And hydrated copper sulfate. So your hydrated copper sulfate crystals. So again, work out the total relative molecular mass. Remember, copper and chlorine keep in your halves. Only one so you do. So 1 by 63.5 is 63.5. Sulfur, 1 by 32 is 32. And oxygen, 4 by 16, 64. Now you could work out your water. 2 by 1 is 2. 1 by 16 is 16 from H2O, and then that means each water is 18, and there's 5 of these 18s. 
1590. Pretty sure. Tally that up for your total relative molecular mass. And you get 249.5. And here it says the percentage of water of crystallization. How much water is in that? It's 90 over 249.5. And again, to make it a percent, times it by 100. And we have 36.07%. Next one, here have you got MgSO4, 7H2O, same thing. By any means, pause. You want to now pause it and try this yourself. Bather on, you know, if you're feeling confident. So, magnesium, 1 by 24 is 24. You'll get a lot more benefit from it. And again, 7 by 18, we know um, our water is now. Tally that all up. Two four six, and then the amount of water in it one two six over two four six times that by a hundred fifty one point two two percent. I say go back over those ones yourselves if you're unsure. Keep practicing the examples, and then go to the questions in the top of the notes. Um. Top of the notes there, you see the percentage of carbon and CH4, sulfur and H2SO4, magnesium and MgO, aluminium and Al2O3, them ones there. Try those. And also in your textbook, page 165, it is in my book anyway, 16 to 21. So pause the video and tip away at those. So pause it now and batter on. Give yourself 10 minutes to do those. Now, just the answers of those. And again, if you didn't have access to the book or the notes, there was the questions. C and CH4. Answer 75%. So you can just look at the covered up the answers or ignore it and just work through the questions. And then I got 32.65. Right. We'll move on now. So this thing known as the empirical formula. So what the empirical formula tells us is what elements are present in the compound and the simplest whole number ratio in which these elements are present. So there's what's known as a molecular formula. It gives us the actual number of elements or what are present in a compound. The empirical formula just simplifies that down. So what C2H2 becomes, say our ethane, it becomes CH. What they do there is 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 2 goes once, and it becomes C1H1 or CH. You just find the highest common factor between the numbers at the bottom. Next one, C6H12O6. Highest common factor of 6, 12, and 6 is 6. 6 into 6 goes once, 6 into 12 goes twice, 6 into 6 goes once. H2, if you look at that there, the highest common factor is just 1. So it actually just becomes H2O, stays the same. C4H8O2, um, highest common factor is 2. 2 into 4 goes 2. 2 into 8 goes 4 times. And 2 into 2 goes once. So just splitting these down. Two more examples and then you can try them. Or again, pause it yourself, batter on through them. And then uh, see where you're right. But it does get a lot more difficult than this. C4H8, highest common factor is 4. 4 into 4 goes once. 4 into 8 goes twice. So CH2. Looks a wee bit odd. C1H2. And then C2H6. And you can see 2 is the highest common factor. So that becomes CH3. Again, I've mentioned pause. You try these ones here yourselves. And then see, did you get the same answers? I'll just write in the answers beside them now. So C H4. 2 is the highest common factor there, so C2H5. 4 is the highest common factor there, so CH2. 2 is the highest common factor there, so C2H4O. And then hydrogen peroxide, 2 is the highest common factor there, so HO. Now, my I'll, pause, I'll stop this video now and put up a, another one on this here.